So you think your NVIDIA RTX 4090 is the best GPU that we could have had? Well, not according to AMD. They said they speculated on perhaps producing a competitor to the RTX 4090. This would have been a 600 watt GPU. Maybe it would have been called, I don't know, a 7950 XT or something like that. And it would have come in probably around $1,600. So the same price as the NVIDIA RTX 4090. AMD gave some like weird reasons why they never pursued it. They said gamers could use the savings to get other PC parts if they just brought a 7900 XTX, which is $999. I mean, that's not usually the way that things work. You either you buy something that's really expensive and you could fit other parts in, or you just buy something cheaper and then you have the choice to use that savings on PC parts. I mean, AMD's making our decisions for us, I guess, and not giving us a competitor to Nvidia in that sort of price bracket. Let's sort of break it down and see if maybe it could have been a really relevant competitor in the GPU market. Remember, GPU prices are at really staggeringly all-time highs for new releases. I mean, the 4090, as good of a GPU as, as it is, still is very, very expensive. Now, let's start with the first point. The 4090 sold out really for months. Like as soon as it came out, the, the shelves were empty. People were buying them within the first week. You could really not even find any upon release. Very different than something like the RTX 4080, which pretty much remained in stock the entire time. So the 4090 has a really big market. Now, crypto mining is no longer in the picture, so no relevancy there. Now, you're going to say you have people that are non-gamers buying the RTX 4090. That's definitely true. A lot of people buy it for even machine learning, for content creation, for various productivity tasks that don't have anything to do with gaming because it's ridiculously powerful, has a lot of VRAM, very valid. But gamers have also been buying a lot of 4090s because you see it everywhere. You even see the famous picture of a 4090 with a seatbelt in a car. I don't think a developer or somebody using it for machine learning probably wouldn't really do that and show off the GPU, but gamers are proud of what they're adding to their you know system. So something like that is definitely going to gamers. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor, VIP-CDKDeals.com, a Windows 10 Pro CD key. Add to cart, you put in code CC20. This will also work on Windows 11. You wanna go into your settings in Windows, change and adjust your CD key, click activate. And now let's go back to the video. So even though the 4090 is in stock now, it took a while for it to reach that. And then if we point to AMD for an even closer comparison and discussion, the 7900 XTX, the more expensive one, the $999. Well, I say more expensive only compared to the 7900 XT, which is already very expensive and unpopular at its price. Not the 7900 XTX, however, very popular GPU. I mean, aside from that little weird reference model, cooler overheating issue that some models had, and it seemed to be sort of, you know, quickly fixed. It doesn't seem like the 7900 XTX was ever really consistently in stock, much like the RTX 4090. So that means people bought the 7900 XTX. They bought a lot of them. Basically, anytime I would see it early on, it would sell out really just as quickly as the RTX 4090. I mean, sure, the only thing it's really missing is some rasterization performance compared to the 4090 and a whole lot of ray tracing performance. That's going to be the big thing there. And it doesn't have the LSS3 with frame generation if you want something like that. And you could say for some content creation type of goals, it's not going to be nearly as good. But you're also saving $600 at $999 compared to $1599 for the 4090. And you're still getting really good performance. Like it's going to crush 1440p. The ray tracing, albeit not that great compared to the 4090, it's decent enough that AMD did make some good progress compared to last generation. So that GPU sold out, meaning there's a market for it. And often people would even pay more than that on the secondhand market. We saw a lot of scalped 7900 XTXs. This is something that really happened just like the 4090, even though the crypto GPU thing is kind of over, still a lot of demand. And then we start pointing our lens and our question towards this hypothetical $1,600 AMD GPU. 
according to them, there wouldn't really be a market for it. Gamers are not going to want to spend that much. But I just kind of showed you guys how gamers did want to spend that much. They bought out the 4090 and the 7900 XTX. Maybe AMD got a little bit shy from their Ryzen sales because that definitely hit a really, really big sort of bottleneck. People just didn't buy Ryzen 7000 like they bought Ryzen 5000. But GPUs are different. I think that a more expensive GPU would certainly have sold. What type of performance would we be looking at with a competitor to the 4090? The 7900 XTX, if we can extrapolate the data from that, already performs like really, really well. I mean, in some games like Call of Duty, you can say that it's going to be beneficial towards, you know, the AMD GPUs, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, that is. It definitely can be the 4090 in some cases if you have a really fast CPU, which is definitely very telling. Now, that GPU, the wattage really, the TDP, we're still talking about in the, you know, paltry 300 something watt range, 355 watts, I believe that it is. Imagine almost doubling this to 600 watts. If the 7900 XTX already can catch up to a 4090 rasterized performance and overall on average it beats the 4080, imagine what upping the power that much could do to the GPU. I mean, I don't even know if AMD knows how to handle that much power. We've never seen a GPU like that from them. We've seen various 4090s at 450, 500 watts. The overclocked models can reach well into the 500s, near 600 in some cases, as the 4090 can also theoretically have that sort of limit. Even the power supply, say 600 watts on the little ATX connector 3.0. So what would AMD do with 600 watts? We can, of course, guess that the rasterization would blow a 4090 out of the water. If it's already close with a 355 watt, you know, 7900 XTX, imagine what's something that's completely unleashed could do it, which is kind of weird. I really don't think it would ever reach that high, especially considering how AMD made fun of NVIDIA for melting power connectors. And then, of course, they had their own issues. If NVIDIA decided not to make a 600 watt GPU and they limited it to 450 watts, what would make it that AMD would be able to push it that much further? So we can agree rasterization would definitely be the 4090, no question about it. I mean, the power is more, and AMD already does really well in rasterization and, you know, like 1440p, even 4K would be highly, highly competitive, if not completely destroyed the 4090. What about ray tracing? We can also assume this would have to be the weakest area that they have to bump up. Maybe with 600 watts of power and having appropriate technology in that GPU to be able to push ray tracing even more, maybe it could get close to a 4090. That's the one area that I really wouldn't say if they'd be able to hit or not. Definitely it would be more than a 7900 XTX, which is maybe like a 3090 Ti level. But even if that GPU, let's say it got up to the level of a 4080 for ray tracing, but in rasterization beat the 4090, you can bet a whole lot of people would buy that GPU for $1,600. I don't think that's the question. I think AMD phrased this question incorrectly. The real question is, can they do it? Can they make it consistent? Can they make the driver support really something that's stable that people will want to buy that expensive GPU? Can they physically build a GPU that's 600 watts or even 500 watts that would consistently outpace an RTX 4090? I think people would be happy with whatever performance you would get compared to a 4090 that's close enough for even the same price. If it beats it in rasterization and it does all these wonderful things, what would happen to the 4090? I mean, NVIDIA would have to release their own 600 watt competitor and it would sort of really branch up that competition. And then we would have to assume since NVIDIA is generally in the lead, they certainly will produce something that could then beat this, you know, hypothetical AMD GPU. So I think that's the biggest question. Could AMD pull it off? Like technically, could they make a GPU that just works that good? I'm not so sure. I mean, even the 7900 XTX with its, you know, much lower power limit, as good as it is, it had a lot of little issues here and there with drivers, and it hasn't been a completely smooth type of experience. So certainly it'd be interesting to see, but I'm not sure they felt they wanted to risk 
pulling that off, especially with the, you know, the new GPU MCM type of architecture that they're doing almost like Ryzen. It's not exactly the same as CPUs instead of having like a monolithic die like Nvidia has. So there's still time to develop that. I don't think they felt the time is ready for a GPU like that. We as enthusiasts would love to see something like that. But then once again, for it to hit $1,600, we're used to AMD having to, you know, really punch above its weight. So $1,600 and is like a 4090, it wouldn't cut it. It would have to be $1,600 and is like nothing that Nvidia has. Is something like, um, you know, a 4090 Ti or a Titan or something like that. That would get people excited. That's why I think the rasterization would be way past it and the ray tracing would have to be close and maybe they would just give it really fast uh, VRAM. Who knows exactly what they would do, but be very interesting. I think they should just say that technically it would be very difficult to pull off a really powerful GPU that's interesting rather than just say that it's better for gamers to save their money and buy other PC parts. Maybe they feel like that's what they have to do to sell more Ryzen 7000 CPUs. I don't know but they should probably say it'd be a difficult task. And then they'd have a pretty quick response from Nvidia, which I'm sure probably has a 600 watt GPU just waiting and they haven't released anything because the 4090 is so dominant. But at the end of the day, it's probably a smart decision on AMD, whatever they may give a reason to as to why they didn't do it, because they should be focusing where NVIDIA isn't. And that's going to be in the lower tier GPUs, maybe mid range, and that sort of higher tier, like the 7900 XT and XTX, where value is going to be king. If they can lower those prices, produce better GPUs and gain more market share, overall, that's going to be a lot more valuable than one sort of halo GPU that not as many people will buy and will just cause GPUs to probably get even more expensive depending on the performance. So that's my opinion on it. Would be interesting to see, but I don't think it makes any sense in the market. Like I said, AMD focused those resources in the mid-range and cheaper GPUs, and that's going to be a lot more beneficial to a lot more people. And unfortunately, if you're an NVIDIA fan or not, they're going to be the top dog probably, you know, for the considerable time in the future with the RTX 4090 until something else comes out probably from NVIDIA that's going to beat that GPU. But that's not such a bad thing because we need more GPUs than really expensive ones. We need the middle and the bottom to also have great products. All right, guys. So remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.